right, welcome back, everybody. Um, last week, you guys seemed to really enjoy our show, and I wanted to like give a huge shout out to Robert and Sarah over on the Rich Dad Radio team. Those guys allowing us to borrow the channel for our new show and like test it out. And everybody seems to really like, I just want to give a big shout out and a thank you to that team and Robert for allowing us to have a little bit of space while we build our own show out. It's going to take a little bit of time, but the crypto verse is coming online. So I'm excited about that. Um, also, I just need to mention, um, Jim and I actually met through a program. It's sort of interesting. And we have the link to the program in the show notes. Everybody should check it out. It's, it's, it's really, really good. Um, and it's, it's a cool community. People get to meet there and you get to meet people like Jim. So having said all that, welcome back, Jim. All hey, it's great to be today. here. So hey, Rob, great about? to be here. Awesome. Yeah. So what are we talking about today? I don't know, man. It's Super Bowl weekend. Yeah, like Pretty so last week, what? We, we went over NFTs, right? Yes. NFTs in general and like, and what they are, right? And there's so much more to it. Like we could, you couldn't cover it in 30 minutes or 14 years. It's, it's complex. So what do we want to talk about today? Yeah, it, well, it's interesting. You should note that because I think sometimes people think they should, I'm going to listen to one podcast on NFTs, crypto, and then I'm going to get it. And it's, yeah, it's, it's hard. I mean, some of this stuff is a little complex, so it takes a little bit of time and that's like anything else in life. You know, you learn, you jump into the space and then you kind of learn and you figure it out along the way. And yeah, it's, it's super exciting to be here. I think we're super early, uh, excited about the fact that all of crypto, I think this weekend is really going to get, a, you know, garner a lot of attention at the Super Bowl, which many are dubbing the Crypto Bowl. I, that's neat, man, as, as millions of people, right, from all over the globe as they, as they watch. And, it, you know, a lot of times people don't even really care about the game. You have a lot of people that will just watch the advertisements. And it's uh, for a 30-second spot, I saw it was 6.5 million. Oh. And uh, you have a lot of crypto companies that have jumped in here and they, they've, you know, bought ads. And that says a lot about, you know, where this is all going. And there's a lot that goes into it, man, even just aside from that 6.5 million. I mean, producing movie quality ads, you're on the big stage and related marketing campaigns, you know, and the Super Bowl audience is a, is a pretty diverse mix. You know, I saw um, one stat, it said about four out of 10 viewers are between the ages of 18 and 49. So I think a group that fits squarely in the demographic of, of crypto customers so, you know, I can't wait to see some of these ads. Hopefully they're, you know, they're, they're good. They're quality ads and people are interested and they're asking questions about, you know, what crypto is in general and what NFTs are, what we talked about last week. So that's, that's what I'm really into. And that's what I can't wait to see. It's going to be exciting. Holy cow. Yeah. That's a lot of money for an ad. Wow. It's, it's so mean, add up, yeah, right? They're going to be amazing. You know, they're yeah. Gonna be. I mean, yeah. What is it like Coinbase? Uh, yeah, uh, FTX is on there. I know crypto.com. Um, maybe Binance, maybe Binance is there too. I think I saw them on the list as well. That's going to be yeah. all these centralized exchanges and they, you know, they have a lot of money and that, you know, they're going to be jumping in. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But that's for me. I'm a football fan. I don't know about you. I'm a huge American football fan. But to me, I'm more into this being the crypto ball. How about even the tickets? Can yeah. we mention that? Yeah, 100%. I thought that was amazing. Go ahead. Yeah, so it, what's really neat is that all of the, the, every person that attends, you get a virtual ticket, an NFT that proves that you are actually at the game. So that'll be on the blockchain, that's actually on the Polygon blockchain. And even if you don't know what that is, I just think it's really cool. And we, we alluded to this last week so many times throughout history. I know for me, like one of the biggest events I ever attended was game six of the World Series between the New York Mets and the Boston Red Sox and the famous game where the ball went under Bill Buckner's legs. I was a young kid, but I was there and you talk to people and like, were you really there? And I'm like, I was there. I don't have the ticket anymore to prove I was there. But when you look at like an event like this, you'll always have something proving on the blockchain, it's transparent, everyone can see it, right, on, the, on a ledger that you were actually there at that event. That's kind of neat, I love that. Amazing. I don't know, did you see there was another ad too for uh, Alfa Romero is gonna be the first car dealer that has their 
maintenance records and everything about your vehicle stored on the blockchain. So they, they're assuming that'll up the value of the vehicle because it proves that it's been taken care of and well-maintained and like, like, yeah, you know, look at all these things it can feather into that makes everything a little bit easier and possibly more valuable. Yeah. I just think you're seeing so many more companies jump into the space. I mean, and, and I know we're going to delve into even like the metaverse and what that is. And that's a word that's being thrown around so much in society, but you're seeing all these companies, whether it's fashion companies, whether it's Nike and Adidas and Gucci just jumped into uh, the sandbox metaverse. And the sandbox is a, a game that's going to be coming out later this year. You see artists, you see entertainers. So there's so much attention here and all these companies, whether it's, you know, Nintendo jumping into the NFT space, metaverse, you know, space as well, uh, Atari, uh, the list, it just goes on and on. So to see that, that portends great things for the future that these companies see. How about Disney? Disney looking to hire somebody. Yeah. yeah, Disney too. So, I mean, it doesn't get any bigger than Mickey's house. Right. So, you know, when Mickey's involved in something, you know, it's a big deal. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of companies, you know, we could, a myriad of companies, we could just go on and on all day here. But it's, it's really germane to our conversation and, and showing and proving that this is, this is not a fad. That Web 3.0, it's still very early but it's here to stay and what it, you know, how it evolves and how it grows and how it flourishes. Uh, it'll be interesting and there'll be some growing pains along the way, uh, but it really is here to stay. And that's why all these companies that write, you know, smartly, they're jumping into the space. Yep. Well, shoot, since you mentioned the metaverse, like, why don't we just chat about that? Because honestly, um, I understand it at a pretty good level. Like I, I have to have everything blurred out because I do a lot of work on my board behind me. But I have an Oculus back there. I, I play VR. I work with developers that work AR, VR. So like- Wow, you never told me this. I didn't know any, I didn't know any of that about yeah. you. So yeah, Rich Dad's rebuilding our web game right now. Like, and we're, we're planning on getting some physical attributes that may or may not work in the future with AR, VR. I'm not telling any secrets here, but um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I know some about it, but right. like the metaverse as a whole and the long-term goal of it is like, is it a virtual world? Is it like, what is it? Like, I just don't. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, it's a good question. And, and I have to start out by saying this, it's become a cheap word and people are just throwing it around. And I see a lot of projects and, and to my dismay, I'm not happy about it. I see so many projects and I see so many people just slapping that, the, the word on, you know, whatever it is that they're into. And I think we need to be really careful in the space as we're setting out here. And it's something that's incredibly new and it's almost hard to define it. And I know some people think they have this all down, but it's still so new that it's being defined as we move on. I can say this. I mean, the term can be traced back to Neil Stevenson's uh, 1992 dystopian novel, Snow Crash. You know, in, in that book, uh, the metaverse is like a, a 3D virtual reality space that's accessed through personal terminals and virtual reality goggles that really have a lot in common with what you just said before, like the Oculus ones, the meta Oculus goggles and, you know, other VR headsets. Yep. So, uh, you know, that's kind of interesting. And even that just the term, you know, you do a quick search on you know, Google Trends. And there's been a huge spike in the search volume of just the word metaverse. And that started right around October 21 with Facebook and the name change. So, and, you know, even VR, we've seen a healthy fluctuation in search volume. And that's even dating back all the way to December 2015. I know Zuckerberg has talked about they've been working on this for seven years. Um, and, and so... If we try to define though, and get into maybe a simple, really simple definition of what the metaverse actually is, I would say the metaverse is kind of a, a continuation of the internet as we know it today. And, and I mean by moving into like a fully immersive and interactive experience. And so the metaverse is gonna be an embodied internet where you are in the experience and you're not just looking at it. And I think we could, I mean, we could just spend an hour talking about that, 
So that's really what the goal is of this, it, you know, as we move ahead into the future, that we would really be inside of the experience, not just looking at it. It's really in, in its purest essence, it's the next frontier in social connection, really in interaction. So do you ever see the movie uh, Ready Player One? Yes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I was actually going to bring that up. Oh, you were. All right, cool. So I think it right. It's kind of akin to that. I mean, I go back and forth between Ready Player One and The Matrix, and maybe for those listeners that don't know what we're talking about, Ready Player One. Uh, you, you, I think you get a really good visualization of what the metaverse is. Originally, a book by Ernest Clive, uh, Steven Spielberg, and all the magic of Hollywood, how he brings the metaverse, you know, to life. And uh, he did in, two, well, I think it was two, like 2018. Yeah, so right. the virtual reality, I think, in that movie is a really good example. You know, it, it, it's science fiction, right? So the film is set in like 2045. It features a virtual world or a metaverse that we would now say known as Oasis. And it was an enhanced, you know, paradise version of Earth and offered people an escape from the struggles of, uh, of real life. So I think of that, but then I also kind of think of the matrix, you know, and that iconic scene of, you know, I, as people are listening, it's, do you want to take the blue pill? And if you do, that's cool. Cause that's where the story ends and you're going to wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe, or you can take the red pill and you can stay in wonderland and we can show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. So that's, that's kind of how I, I'm a big, I, I love to like memorize and it's kind of weird, I guess. I'm, I'm a little eccentric, my eccentricities. I love to like memorize like movie clips and lines. So The Matrix to me is one of the greatest movies of all time. And it's definitely applicable to what we're talking about here. I totally agree. I absolutely yeah. love The Matrix. Ready Player One was phenomenal. So, I mean, it sounds a lot like a digital society where things could be, malleable or changed or made any way you want it to be i mean like what like what's so important about it why why are they pushing so hard into this whole metaverse idea like what's the, what do you think the grand um reward for humanity is from this kind of I, I would think for you know I, i'd be remiss if i didn't mention i think i just think it's the next step of our existence in digital format you know, uh, it, it's almost going to be a virtual world, I would say, first, that's going to be like the digital twin of the one that we're in right now. And I don't I think some people, uh, they characterize it. And, and I would say that this is not accurate, but they think it's like going to be a world that you just simply turn off at the end of the day. Uh, so I don't really look at it that way. You know, Web 2.0, and you look at how participatory and all social media, and it connected us to online communities and it you know made the internet great in a lot of different ways but i think web 3.0 and what we're talking about here with the metaverse through virtual headsets you know body sensors um we're going to be placed again in this immersive experience really inside the internet in this like virtual it's the metaverse is not going to be a singular like virtual universe Right. It will be the virtual universe where everyone and anyone can exist like as a as a digital human and you'll have like an avatar. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think Zuckerberg said something. Maybe I'm paraphrasing here to some extent. He said we we've gone from uh, desktop, I think he said, to web to mobile. And then he said we went from like text to photos to video. And he's like, this isn't the end of the line. And I think he's I think he's really correct. Um, I, I would also say we don't really know, and it is a little bit scary because remember, Web 3.0 is about decentralization. So we, I am a little bit leery of some of these companies that are so centralized. We don't really want them controlling. I don't want Meta controlling what happens and what we look at with what we would, you know, classify in term as as a metaverse. Uh, but it's, I'm, I'm excited about the, you know, interoperability that hopefully that we can really see um in there and, and can i just give you maybe a couple of requirements that i see so maybe it would help the audience of like what actually would be required for something to be a metaverse would that be okay yeah i, I, I shoot for the audience how about for me <laughs> yeah you. okay so cool I, you know i think in order to be uh aptly characterized as a metaverse it has to be massively scaled 
Uh, it has to be interoperable. And when I say that, and I'll just use games as an example, and what I, what I love about blockchain gaming in the future of that and why I'm so bullish on it and why I think so many people are going to be jumping in and not only just the there's a play to earn aspect for some of these games and maybe people have heard of Axie Infinity, which is kind of the template, the first one out of the gate. The game is even, it isn't really even that great, but it's the whole idea of the play to earn. What I'm excited about when I say interoperable is that when you play a game, say Fortnite or Roblox or pick whatever game you want, Sims, I don't know, pick whatever you want. When that game kind of dies, all of the money, I know I have a 12 year old and hey, I need V-Bucks or you know, I, need, I need this asset in the game and you buy it, it is exclusive. You can only use those assets in that ecosystem. So what, I, what I'm excited about is that the metaverse would be very interoperable for gaming in that you can bring assets and move them over, bridge them over, that it would be seamless. You can bring yourself and your avatar and who you are and all your goods and you know whatever it is, you can move that into different worlds and different ecosystems. So that's one thing. It has to be real-time rendered. It, 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 a requirement, again, you have to have 3D virtual worlds. Uh, it has to be synchronous, I guess you could say. It, you know, in being very, you know, massively scaled, you need really an unlimited number of users. So the, the, this being so big and an individual kind of sense of presence. And maybe, maybe we could say a continuity of, of data that those would be just some of the requirements in order for something really to be labeled as a, as a metaverse. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's helpful. I want to just try to keep it simple. Very but. high level and abstract, but yeah, I mean, I, like overall, I I I understand what you're saying, but I mean, it's honestly in a 30, 45 minute show, like explaining what metaverse is sounds. Yeah, like it's a, hard. Yeah, yeah. A huge hill to climb. <laughs> yeah, it's, so you know what? In it, in it, in the meta, like in, in this metaverse that we're going to be looking at in the future, and and, and however this unfolds. You're not just going to be controlling really a digital avatar. You'll be full, right? You're, you're going to fully immerse yourself in all the internet has to offer as the digital avatar that you've kind of created there. And this is going to be wild in terms of, again, talking about all these companies, right? And how they're looking to advertise and they're buying land. And I'm excited too to get into, uh, I can't wait to talk about because I think it ties in so perfectly with the vision of Rich Dad in talking about virtual land, digital land and, and earning passive income that you can build in some of these ecosystems that you can build there and that you can rent stuff out. I mean, how cool is that? Cash flow? Oh. Metaverse? What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. That sounds like a rich dad dream right there. No, it is, man. And, and that's, that's what's available now. And, you know, you want to pick the right metaverses. You want to pick the right, when I'm talking about games and such, but I could give you, I mean, the, the if we just went on the internet, it's replete with articles talking about all these companies, whether I talk Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and everybody's covering this. And you're seeing people spend upwards. I mean, there have been land sales, digital land sales that have been over $2 million dollars. Yeah. Whether it's you know Axie Infinity, Decentraland, Sandbox, I think people see Web 3.0 and they see what the this virtual land has to offer. And then for us as we move ahead, now this isn't right around the corner because I know some people are going to go, oh, these guys are kidding, right? Like they're acting like this is. I'm not in any I way. Have a current example of this. Yeah, go ahead, man. Take it because you know, like I'm, I'm, uh, you and I talk because you lo you're the master of like NFT, GameFi, Metaverse stuff. I am like. Still learning, brother, though. Still yeah, learning. Better and better. I'm on the DeFi side. I like yeah. DeFi because it's cash flow on crypto. So that is like, you know, I'm a rich dad guy. I have been for a long time. Right. Um, but yeah, one of the projects I'm involved in actually just invested some of our treasury and bought a plot of land in the sandbox. And Love guess it. who our neighbor is? SpaceX. <laughs> like wow. it's like the coolest stuff and like i don't even know what it fully means yet that's why i love talking to you but like when those kind of announcements come out i'm like whoa we have a chunk of the metaverse now and like okay now like what do i do there do i go hang out or so yeah you know what? it's pretty neat you know what i said before and you know and again what i love about these kind of organic conversations we can have a topic and it can go in a million different directions and that's what's great you know, I'm, I'm even kind of thinking about it. And I think a lot of this was really kickstarted. What really sped up the process of moving into this? It's really COVID. 
So you look at the totality of what the pandemic, what we've been through and how hard it's been. It's been arduous for many people. But when you look at the other side of it, I think this is in, in people living on right Zoom, which is what we're on right now, and people connecting in different ways. I think it's really speeding up the process by which people realize that we can be connected really on, an, on another level. Right. Well, that's funny you bring that up because that's exactly sort of the approach Rich Dad's taking. I mean, we have this yeah. huge like gorilla started from scratch. We don't know where they came from. This whole cash flow club thing at Rich Dad. And it has always been physical, right? It's people getting together at like yeah. hotel lobbies or whatever it might be and playing our game together. Well, we noticed over COVID that sort of destroyed this whole community of people that get together collectively because large groups weren't allowed. These people, they pivoted all over the place and went to Zoom yeah. and all the stream. So little teaser, yeah. the new the new version of the Rich Dad game coming out is exclusively for our cash flow clubs and club members, but it is built for cash flow clubs to work digitally and it is based off of what you're saying. COVID sort of ex exacerbated this evolution in technology, uh, in technology. like Zoom's value went astronomical after COVID because it let people communicate virtually. Yeah. You know, you know, it's interesting, Rob, because, you know, I'm in my forties too. So I, I think we look at generations that, are, you know, are younger. We look at, especially younger people, we're seeing so many people that really prefer to be online. Right. Yeah, I have a so, year old daughter. She like, that's where there she you go. Yeah. yeah, man. So like, I think people are, preferring to be online so life has shifted online even more so than it was before not that it wasn't i'm not saying that but you're seeing with online like social events becoming the norm it's inevitable right that you're going to see no wonder we see all these brands that are jumping in because they see that they're marketing teams they're analysts they're realizing where we are and this is like you know and i know gary v you know the name gary v and he talks about like nfts like it's the gold rush but I would say, you know, buying land, if I could just lastly say this, I think in my estimation, it's my assertion, buying like land in like the sandbox. And I, I bought land in the sandbox. And I feel like it's akin to buying like real estate in New York City, like over a century ago. Right. That's what this is like, man, in, in, yeah. in how new this is and how nascent this is and how this is going to appreciate and value and how that ties in again with what we're talking about on here. So, yeah, it's super important. And, you know, I feel bad a little bit, though, because you asked me before you asked me a question about even why the metaverse is important. So we're digressing a little bit, not really well, yeah, digressing the but... with our discussions like we end up all over the place. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I'm sorry, everyone, if you can't follow this, you're going to get better at it. But no, it's all good. I'm hoping it's good stuff. We, we sort of riff back and forth. This is, yeah, I love it, man. So, you yeah, know, can, we, can we circle back to that? Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. So, discover that. yeah, so you were saying, like, hey, why is the metaverse important? I think, it, and, and I'm kind of um, reiterating or, you know, talking again, highlighting what some of the stuff that we've already talked about. I think it offers human beings an in-person way to connect and communicate from anywhere in the world virtually. Now, there are pros and cons to this. So I, I, I'm not going to say we have to mention we don't know some of the full ramifications or implications of what this means. We don't even know with COVID sociologically, psychologically, right? Um, you know, so even philosophically, all of this stuff, what it really means. So all of that's going to kind of be fleshed out. But I, I wanted to say that, throw that in there. But I think the metaverse, why it's important it, the metaverse is going to support a whole virtual economy. I think where users can enjoy like numerous activities, like you can build a business and that's something in line with rich dad, right. In, in, you know, with cash flow and building a business and you could get into that, right. And networking with others. And even, how about this, even hosting like family gatherings. And, you know, I know Bill Gates has talked a lot about this, you know, what, whether you love him, hate him, you have to respect what the guy's done, you know, technologically speaking. And at some point he said in the coming years, and I agree with this, he said, yeah, I can see like work meetings, like all, like just all work meetings taking place in the metaverse, you know, and that really elevating even more remote work. Doesn't that really make sense? Yeah. So that you and your colleagues can sit around the same table with this and view the same presentation and discuss matters further in a completely immersive environment. Then when the meeting is over, you could take off your headset and you could be back at home with your family. I mean, so that's pretty incredible, 
right? You know, that something like that could happen down the road. Yeah. I mean, some of that can happen now. Like I know, I know yes. like with yeah. my Oculus, you know, it's got like a theater room. I could hook up with other people that are, have an Oculus. We could sit on the same couch and watch the yep. same screen. I mean, Absolutely. Like, all these little nuances have been tested. I mean, Oculus has been out for years. Yes. Probably even Facebook bought them. So right. these things have been tested. This isn't like this new mechanism that's being built. It's just so big that it, it you know, it's going to take a time. No, yeah. And that's, that's the thing to put it on a, you know, a mass scale and to get it into, you know, every, you know, homes across the world or, you know, even he, just starting here and, you know, in America or other places. But yeah, it'll take time, just like every other technological innovation, you know, the TV set go back over 50 years ago, right? It was the same thing. And anything that's new and it's novel and, and trying to get accustomed to it and acclimated to it, that's really going to take time. So it's just going to continue, to, going to continue to grow. You know, I know with the goggles, they've had some issues with the Oculus goggles, some people, you know, headaches or whatever, some of that movement. But it's bigger than games and working out and, like you said, hanging out on a couch and meeting up with people. There are going to be an ample, uh, you know, ways in which that you can connect with other people. So that's pretty good. And even traveling around, you know, I brought up like the Disney before, you know, imagine like being able to avoid all those lines. I don't know about you, man, but I don't enjoy sitting in lines, no. and, you know, going to, you know, the Mickey's house. So, you know, <laughs> something like that, going to an amusement park, even that they can create these experiences that you can have in the confines of your home. So that's, that's kind of cool. What, what about even like you're going to, you're looking at a, a hotel or something, or, you know, just traveling. How cool would that kind of be if you could look at, you, you want to book a hotel room, but instead of like just scrolling through site pictures, you would be able to virtually walk through like a, a 3D version of the room. So like a 3D walkthrough would give travelers, like it gives you like a firsthand immersive experience of the hotel rooms and the decor and all the amenities yes. that static images are unable to deliver. Yes, right. It would give me more. Right? This is yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hey, so, so that's kind of cool I hate to do this, but we have to take like a short break, sure. just a minute. And uh, we'll come back and we have some other things I'd like to talk to you about because you've spurred some ideas for me. So we'll sure. be back in just a minute. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Sorry about the short break. Um, we were talking about just the metaverse in general and everything. And I had brought up a couple of, you know, references to the Oculus and I'm not promoting that there, there, there's a couple of others available. It's just the only thing that I have any experience with, but like now I'm really, really interested in like this piece of machinery, not machinery technology sitting behind me. Like, what do you see the future of like that being used within the, the metaverse? And I've already used it a little bit in, I would say what my, micro verses, you know what I mean? Like I, use the example of sitting down on a couch and watching Netflix with somebody through it. But I don't think that's what the metaverse is about, but I think it's a, a stepping stone to what it's going to be. And I just, I would love to hear your per, uh, perspective on what that looks like. Yeah. You know, I, I think you'd have to delve into that at this point, you'd have to talk a little bit about like virtual reality and augmented reality. And those are like, right. Those are terms that we hear a lot uh, and even, you know, mixed reality and it, it, there's, it's a lot of different facets to this, but I think it would be important to maybe make a distinction for the audience, for people to have some basic understanding of what we're talking about with the whole metaverse here and, and uh, you know, VR and AR, right? So virtual reality and, and augmented reality, right? I think that would be, yes. that would be important. Because yeah, so, like, a lot of people are confused by the two. I yeah, agree. so I think the distinction, like you, you look at... You know, you look at VR and you look at AR, and I think it really comes down to the devices they require and kind of the experience itself. So it, it, from, from my taste, my, I guess just in my definition, augmented reality is using like a real world setting while virtual reality is completely virtual. So yeah. virtual reality would require a headset device but augmented reality can be accessed like with a smartphone and people are doing this all the time. So AR is enhancing both the virtual and the real world while virtual reality is only enhancing, we could say a fictional reality, yeah. right? Yeah, so, a great example is- Is that good? Go ahead. 
Yeah, augmented reality is like, I don't know how many people play games, but it's very, very widely known that Pokemon Go is- I was like, going to say it. I was hoping yeah. you'd say it. Yeah. yeah and which is Perfect. like the, the thing, right? You can go down to your park, hold your phone up and see some like thing you need to fight by the slide by the, in the park. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's different than throwing on this whole like headset and becoming fully immersed into this world of virtual reality. So- that was a great yeah. description, Jim. Yeah, and the, I think the other thing I would say too is like the Snapchat, like the lenses that people use, you know, and you go on Snap and they, you know, people want to, you know, have some of that drip and that swag and they change the way they look and they put the filters on there. That's what we're doing on our phones when we do that. That's augmented reality. Yeah. So it keeps the real world central, but it enhances it with other digital details like layering, like in a sense, like a new strata of perception. And we're, we're just kind of in a sense, supplementing, um, I guess our, our reality or our environment to some extent. So that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, that me too. I mean, like, yeah, AR, augmented reality, augmentation means to alter or change. Yes. So you're changing reality, right? Virtual reality is creating a whole new reality. Yeah. I, I look at it, so. Yeah. And I think when you look at it, like whether it's gaming or whether it's gaming or movies or medicine or, you know, the, all the uses of, you know, virtual reality and augmented reality and, you know, even, you know, mixed reality. I don't want to get into that. We'll keep it simple here. But you look at like healthcare, right? And using this stuff for training, for like surgical simulations, film and TV, you know, movies and shows and creating unique experiences virtual travel you know and i think it's kind of cool that you can take virtual trips to an art museum or you know another planet and all from home that's wild it's professional crazy. sports for like you know i don't know training programs you know to help pro and amateur athletes or and, and again gaming which is something that uh is is something that i'm i'm really into and i study and you know and analyze these games and the tokenomics i, play them, though. I don't study them like you do I yeah know. yeah i play them with my and listen that's like for me, and I know some, listen, for the audience, some of this can be a little ethereal and abstract. That's okay. We're trying to put meat and flesh to it and it'll, it'll take a little bit of time. But yeah, for me, the, um, I guess the genesis of this was my son's a big gamer. And then I just started to get really into it. And I laugh with one of our mutual friends, Jeff, Jeff Wang, uh, one of my partners on, on the other side. And we laugh because I really got into this because I'd get my, like my son and even his friends and like, I want them to play games and see stuff and be like, you like this game? You think this is good? And then I do all the higher level stuff. But even as I'm getting into the games, I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool. It's going to be a good game. Yeah. It's going to be maybe a triple A game. So yeah, it's so like I get it. Youth has a pulse on what's Yeah, happening. man, absolutely. And, and we, we would be, it wouldn't be prudent for us to ignore that. I just think it's wise to look to the, the, the younger generation and to see what we can you know, get and learn from them. I think too often, right? We're like setting our ways. But for me, as somebody again in my 40s, I'm I'm looking to these younger generations and seeing what I can learn, and obviously trying to teach, but also seeing what we can teach them. And it's a mutually beneficial relationship. That's funny. It's the second time you brought up the 40. I'm in my 40s too. So just yeah. full disclosure, Jim and I are trying to create the first podcast <laughs> of the oldest dudes on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's I love amazing it. i love um, it man so like what do you think the metaverse is going to be like what it is today what will it be a year from now and what do you think it's going to be like five years i don't yeah. even go 10 because no like, i don't even you know you it's like living it's, it by then I don't it's know. really yeah it's yeah exactly and again what i said before i think there's positives and and there could be really some negatives i'm i'm definitely worried about the centralization aspect so i have to say that again i don't want these you know these big entities these big companies whether it's google facebook the whole point, it's antithetical to what we've tried uh, to move away from, that what was started with Bitcoin, and you go back to 2008, and all of decentralization and DeFi, all of this, and finance game, all of this, is because we're trying to move away from that. So I really hope that we can maintain the aspect of decentralization as much as we can, and in whatever aspect of it, what you know, whatever it looks like, I really hope that's the case. Now, nobody really knows for sure. You know, a lot of the experts and them trying to 
forecast and we, you can't be myopic and just look at short term, long term, like these things are going to take, I mean, I think we're at least five, at least five years away. You know, I've heard some experts and that, you know, they've chimed in saying, you know, with, with the holograms and augmented reality, and then even like almost like contact lenses, things that we could see within a decade, you know, of, of bringing you into this immersive world. I don't even know, are you a fan of Black Mirror? I think the, the last Black Mirror episode, I think they produced or put out that I saw they dropped, it kind of is along these lines of, you know, and they're always talking about technological issues. It's a really, it's, it's a higher level show, I would say, and it's always thought provoking. But one of those episodes was, was kind of like that, these two guys that were, were gaming and they were brought into, you know, this world. And it, I was like, wow, this is kind of what the metaverse is and Ready Player One to some extent. But I don't know if we know for sure, but I still think there's, you know, we're, we're at the beginning of the journey. If it's a marathon, we're maybe a mile into the marathon. So there's a long way to go. Uh, and there are going to be some storms. We're going to face some inclement weather as we're running this race. But as we move forward, I think it's going to be exciting to see all of the the, the proliferation of, of the technological innovation just as it explodes uh, across the scene in, in all these different areas. So yeah, it's hard to ascertain fully what it's going to look like. We've said a lot even here in this conversation, but it'll be very transformative uh, in a lot of ways. And even, you know, he, he, can I, if I could say this and just kind of go back a little bit, one of the other things that I'm, I'm really excited about is, you know, like, how could I use an example? Let's use it. The Super Bowl is coming up again. So we kind of started with the Super Bowl. Maybe as we're ending the conversation before we talk about a few, you know, projects. The fun part. Project. Yeah, the, yeah. the fun part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm even thinking about like you know, with the Super Bowl coming up, what I what I like again is what what the metaverse kind of offers. Say, let's pick an athlete like Aaron Donald. I don't know if everyone knows who that is or Cooper Cup. I'm using two guys on the Rams. You're on the West Coast. I think the Rams are going to win, by the way. I don't know. Yeah, right. I mean, they're a good football team. The Bengals, but yeah, exactly, man. I'm, I'm totally on the same page. But what's kind of cool is I'm thinking about it. If I bought an Aaron Donald jersey, right, and I'm you know I'm wearing it in that arena for the Super Bowl. You know, I can wear it in that arena, and I can you know that's kind of cool. That's great. And pick whatever sports team you want, whatever you know. I, I don't care. But you bought that, and you use it in that arena to wear it. I don't know. Are you going to be carrying that around to all different places wherever you go to show it off? You may flex it a little bit when you wear it somewhere. But I think what's kind of cool about the metaverse is you can bring everything, your digital self and everything that you have. And again, it'll be the interoperability that you can bring it into, you know, wherever it is. It's reducing the value of something that you buy if it's only good in one arena or one area. So you can use this stuff everywhere, bring it everywhere, and people will see our digital selves, the representation of who we are digitally is going to become really, again, it's going to become super important, right? And, and we, we talked about it last week, and we said what you buy says a lot about social currency and what you do, even like ki our kids in school, we put stickers on our cars and, and showing, hey, my kid went here, my kid's in this college, my kid graduated from here. We flex who we are, we flex what we have, but I think in the metaverse, you'll be able to bring all of this in in a seamless way and be anywhere and move in and out of places show off again who you are and all these digital goods and items and assets that we will be able to use. I think that's kind of cool. That is pretty amazing. It, essentially what you're saying, instead of like the 13 people that see that your kid goes to school or college, um, it's yeah. be anybody that you're connected with in the future. Let me ask you another question. So in your house right now, you have some art that's up on a wall or anything. I don't know. People see behind me. I don't have any art behind me real art, but if you have a piece of art that's in your home, right? How many people see that piece of art? How many? No, Not many, like right? The people, yeah, the people, the people that you're close to, the people that live there, maybe your family and friends when they come over, but you could then take the digital art that you have, your digital stuff, and you can show it off and, and you know, everyone can see it on, you know, in the metaverse or, you know, again, like talking about like web 2.0 it's social media but this is going to be a digital representation of who you are and you bring that in and people get to see and people can even get immersed inside of your house and see kind of some of these things and that's a little scary in some sense but it's kind of cool really when you think about what you know the technology and where it can really lead yeah 
That's fun, you know, because I plan on minting our our show designs. Just, just okay. to be congruent yeah. with what we believe in. I just think it would yeah. be cool to have like our show design minted on the love blockchain it. and like it's love provably it. ours forever. You know what I mean? So I love it, man. Sort of the value of it. Let's jump into the last part, which I'm excited about. I always love hearing about like any new projects you have going on. I have one going on right now that I think that there's a really, it's a great project, but it has an amazingly good learning experience baked into right. it. But I will let you go first. because I'm Yeah, sure. Do you mind if I share my screen? It's just easier for the audience. Not at all. So hold on here. Okay, so if I share my screen and let me see. Don't share your crypto okay. wallet. What's that? Don't share your crypto wallet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sharing that. So the audience, all right, you can see that now, right? So if I if I show this up here, like here's a project that I, I really like. This is an NFT project. And uh, this one is called Project Gajira. And it's kind of cool. And look at, look at how many followers, first of all. They have 110,000 followers. Uh, in their Genesis drop, which was their first NFT drop, they had a supply of 333, right? Wasn't NFT. Was this like 80,000 yesterday, though? Uh, what, the, the followers? The followers. Yeah, it was. I don't know. It might have been. They did yeah, something that was really was cool. Like, maybe, like, hey, maybe it was. A, crypto is so fast. So yeah, fast. man, it, it, it does fly. The floor on this, get this, Rob. The floor on this, as of earlier today, was 23 ETH. For the supply so, of hey, just so everybody knows when Jim yeah, references but, yeah go floor, ahead they have secondary markets or markets that you can buy yeah. these on um and the floor is the cheapest that you can get the cheapest one of these for so the floor is literally the cheapest price you can get one for yeah so if, if ethereum is trading at like do the math if ethereum is trading at thirty one hundred dollars for one one ethereum right so times 23, that's what the, that's what the floor is. So that's, pr that's pretty crazy, that's right? Amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what's cool about this project is the, 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 uh, the original Japanese name for Godzilla is a giant monster at the center of a, a Japanese media franchise. So you mix these two words together and that's where you get this uh, Gajira. And this is, I'm really excited because I, I've talked to the founder. I vet a lot of these projects out, man. I would never bring up a project if I didn't really think it was really good. And why I like Shan, the, the founder of this project, uh, first of all, he's he's super bright. He's super intelligent. Uh, killed it on, on Gajira, the first launch. And they're actually going to be launching soon. Uh, the, it's going to be in a few weeks. And the next supply for their second launch is going to be 3,333. And what I thought was really neat, look what this guy did. So out of this 3,333, he said, look, he created this. He said, we're going to be conducting a private sale for 100 out of the total supply of the 3,333. So he said, we're going to run this 100 spots. Anyone can participate in this. All you had to do is fill out a form and, and put in there what you would pay. And again, what Rob and I are talking about is ETH. So say you were going to pay, I'm willing to pay five ETH for one of these NFTs or four or seven or whatever it is, right? So again, one ETH again, $3,100. So he does, he does this, and I love how brilliant this guy is. He was getting people that were sending in, uh, I'll, pay, I'll pay seven ETH. Somebody said, I'll pay 10 ETH. And what he did, and, I, and again, why I think he's so smart, he said, you know what I'm going to do? everyone is going to get this for two ETH. So he said, I'm going to make this two ETH. He picked the 100 people, all the, the top 100, right, that, that, that jumped in here, the top 100 offers on these, these spots. He said, here's what I'm going to do. Even if you said you were willing to pay 10 ETH, I'm going to let you pay two ETH. Isn't, I mean, that's pretty incredible. So he's a guy that's not about money, man. He's not about be, this being a cash grab. The art is really cool on the first project. I'm excited about the art that's going to come out on the next one. The collaborations and the community. You can't even, Rob, you can't even get in the Discord. You can't even get, there's no, like people are like, how do I get in this Discord? It's yeah. an incredible community of people that are tied together. And that's something we talked about before and that we love, right? In analyzing and evaluating NFTs. It has to have a really great community. And look at this, I promise, just the last part on this. 
look what he has here. This is another uh, this is another tweet that they threw out there, and it says sneak peek of one of the games in their little mini casino. So their Genesis holders that was from the first drop again, the three hundred and thirty three. And it goes on to Generation 2, those people that can get in on this 3,333 drop, you can get in the Discord, you're, you're going to get these, they're launching a token. And what's kind of cool, they, they said they're going to unleash it all to win a whitelist of their choice. And look on the side, these are some of the projects that are massive. And people may go, I don't know anything about these projects. Hey, well, hold on for one second. Yeah, sure. Oh, you are just a fire hose. Sorry, just, don't be fast. Just I get it. Put me down. That. Um, when it comes to crypto, getting on a whitelist is like an exclusivity. It's like a first peak. So these whitelist things are incredibly, incredibly important if you're into crypto or into these projects. If you can get whitelisted or get a whitelist opportunity, you get the first opportunity to buy. So a lot of these are very, very, um, I don't know, valuable. Like I, I love getting whitelist spots. They're, they're amazing. Yeah. So I just wanted to let everybody know. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you clarified that. No, that's good. It's important. You know, and at, at times it, it's great. And that's what Rob's good. He'll keep me on the tracks because I could be a freight train. I get so excited about this stuff. And I know our audience, we have a lot of people maybe that are new. And then you have some people that are well-versed and they understand all the, the nomenclature we use. But so it's good. I'm glad you're doing that. But bottom line is this is a project that I think is pretty cool. And I think people should just check out. And what we do on here, none of this is ever financial advice. These are just kind of things that we're into that we like, and we want to bring them to your attention and you make your own decisions on, you know, what you think. So Project uh, Gajira, I think is, is, is pretty cool. And just the second one quick, I just, I wanted to bring attention to it. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is Johnny Depp. Who is that guy? That's Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, I think everybody knows who Johnny Depp is. So Johnny Depp here, he's got his own project. And let me just pull up the quickly. It's the Twitter link. This is Never Fear Truth. That is the name of his NFT project that is launching sometime after February 18th. Uh, he has 62,000 followers on Twitter. And again, Discord. Rob and I are talking about Discord. And that's the place where a lot of these projects, you learn a lot. That's where you meet the community. So if you want to get into NFTs, you're like, how do I get into any of this? get it open a discord account get into some of these projects and usually you get links on twitter or on their their website that'll get you into that space and that's where you learn a lot i know in the future we're going to be talking about how to set up a metamask wallet how do you even mint an nft so that i would like to show you how to do it and simplify things and make the onboarding as easy as possible as seamless as possible for you as somebody that wants to learn and get into the space but yeah, so never fear truth. I just thought it'd be kind of cool to show people, look at these big names, celebrities that are jumping in. And his art is actually, his art is actually pretty good. So, but the mint price isn't cheap. So the mint price for this is higher than you look at in a lot of other launches or projects. It's, it's 0.6 ETH, which again is high. But for me, it's kind of a novelty. Like, you know, I just want to say I got a Johnny Depp, you know, NFT. And I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, it's, you know, and he, this is how he classifies it. I took this off of his Discord server. He says, uh, they say Johnny's art exists at the intersection of pop art and street art. So recognizable images of people in popular culture, culture are recast in vibrant, bright colors and overlaid with the energy and wit of street art. So he's saying it's like street art and pop art with feeling. So it's kind of cool. And, you know, I, I, I'm really into it. I want to see where the project goes. Uh, we'll ultimately see in the, in the next couple of weeks and follow it. And I don't know if, if I'm, is it cool if I mention this, that there is a possibility down the road of something coming to fruition? Am I allowed to mention that on the show? Or should I? Should I, mean, I... I think so. I mean, like we've been in talks with them. So like, I think it's, it's important. Is that, I, I think people would like this. That there may be an opportunity, and, and this may be a couple of months down the road, to have Johnny Depp and somebody else from his team to come on the Rich Dad show here, the crypto show and the cryptoverse, and, and to talk about his project and kind of how it went. And I'm not getting into anything with his, you know, movies, Jack Sparrow and Pirates of the This is just purely about his uh, his work as an artist in the NFT space and what he sees with Web 3.0. So that's it, man. I'll, I'll cut it short on that. Those are the two projects that I'm, 
I, I kind of, I like, I'm into, I'm into a ton of projects, but to, to sum it up, that's, that's where my mind's at. Why don't you talk about your project now? I'll stop sharing. <laughs> that's awesome. Like a Johnny Depp is creating his, yeah. I didn't even know he's, I mean, I know he's an artist from an actor perspective, but I yeah. didn't know he was an artist artist. Yeah, man, he's he's super talented in music, art. I mean, you name it. He's a he's he's a renaissance man. He's a, yeah. So he's involved in a lot of different things, endeavors. That is so, awesome. Thank you. I'm excited, man. Show me your project. All right, so I'm just going to give just a really short story. Then I will show yeah. it. But there's cool. also a great lesson in this in my mind because I've been burned by it. I 100 percent know <laughs> that you have, which is like a. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we, we planned on doing a show. I wanted a really cool profile picture. And this is, by the way, this is how crypto can, is typically run, right? For people like finding new projects, right. not finding a new profile picture, but just randomly searching for stuff. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I was looking for a cool profile picture. I love mountain gorillas. I absolutely love it. Like silverback, like is my thing. I've loved them since I was kids. I love their like family kinship. I like how tied they are. Yeah. I randomly found this project had these amazing looking gorillas. Like I thought it was awesome. So anyway, I bought one. Then I found out that they actually have a donation, a physical donation on the back end where they take proceeds, some of the proceeds from the treasury and, right. and put it into a nonprofit that helps mountain gorillas in real life. Oh, I love it. I bought three more after that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's so you man that's so you. Yeah, these things have play to earn yeah. which is cash flowing opportunities in the future right mm -hmm. anyway on to the fun lesson and i'll just show you how cool this art is and how cool they look by the way people that are behind this have done star wars game of thrones all this really really cool stuff they're the alpha con club they're, they're that art is that art is dope that's it's, super it's slick amazing. man and i mean just super everything slick. they have a great roadmap they like they tell you who their team is with their imdb links by the way these are all good learning lessons like this is doxed or letting people know who's part of the the uh project. yeah right and the art is off the chart and i just was like i'm gonna grab one you know who everybody in it is their discord is like 249,000 people in their Discord and only 8,888 actual Kong holders. Like, it's amazing. It yeah, the Wild Out Ratio is awesome. Party before this, wow. online, never done it. They had to delay the project. So I was supposed to, I was going to reveal one of my Kongs to everybody <laughs> oh, today because I thought it would be so fun to just, you and I learn together what I, yeah. I could have got a legendary. Who knows what these are worth? But they had to delay it and it is part of everything in crypto that like, man, if you find a project that releases on time, awesome. If they don't <laughs> release on time, it doesn't mean it's a bad project. It's yeah. just sort of part of the process. So. They're notorious, man. This is what, so I, yeah. So it's funny because to let you know, Rob and I were texting before the show and he told me about that. I'm like, man, you know what? I'm almost surprised when things are on time. Right. Yeah. I mean, when something like they meet the, yeah, the deadline or whatever, when they tell you they're going to announce, reveal, whatever it may be. But hey, that looks like a really good project. The art is is really nice, um, sophisticated. I, I think that looks great. Like you said, the, you hit all the things. The wallet ownership looks really good. You're talking about uh, a fully docs team, what you said, that everybody knows, that their audience knows who they are. Their backing, the partners, their the, the experience that they already bring to the table. So all these things are really important when we're analyzing NFT projects. So it's not just like you look at, say, the art and go, wow, the art looks really good. I'm going to get involved in that. That's just one piece. That's only one aspect of analyzing and, and evaluating these projects. Yes. So you good know, stuff, I'm, man. I'm just going to give one last tip to everybody. Yeah, go ahead. It's just something I do. I literally saw this art, loved the art. I initially or instantly jumped in their Discord into their general chat. And the first thing I do is yeah. just ask a couple random questions to the community. The response from the community is a great tell on the value of the community and how good the project is. That Absolutely. is one thing I've learned out of the box. Just ask questions. You have to engage. It's the best yeah. way to learn. Man, that's good stuff. That's wisdom right there. Hey, I th I th this was a lot of fun. This is a great conversation. Really enjoyed it. Agreed. I loved it. I loved it. And I'm, I appreciate it. If there's still people left listening to this, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we have a lot more to come. This is, this is just the beginning of what we're trying to do. So thank you. Can I just throw this out there too? Yeah. 
I think we have talked too. it would be kind of cool with some of these projects and maybe these teams we talk to that we're not invested in them and it's never like, again, it's never financial advice, but it'd be really cool in the future to have like, you know, maybe a whitelist giveaway or something, a raffle well, to give I away to the people. Our secrets for dude. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to divulge that. Just, oh, all right. I, just, I know. I know. We have a That'd be kind of cool down the road. Down the pike. So yeah. just stay tuned. It'll be fun. It's just a couple of old 40 yeah. something year olds <laughs> talking about young people's crypto. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Big plans, man. Exciting. Good yeah. stuff. Awesome. Hey, thanks for having me on. 100%. Talk to you next week. Enjoy the Super Bowl. Yeah.